We've seen the rise of new fifth-generation fighters. Turkey's TF Kwan, South Korea's KF-21, India's Hyul AMCA, and China's J-20 and J-31. Among them, South Korea's KF-21 looks to have the best tech and industrial support ready to go. Meanwhile, China's J-20 has massive funding and unmatched production backing. But today, we turn to Russia, a nation that's introduced not one, but two next-generation fighters. One is the Su-75 Checkmate, a sleek single-engine design whose future remains uncertain. The other, the Su-57 Felon, a stealthy twin-engine multi-role fighter designed to rival the F-22 and F-35. The story begins all the way back in 1979. The Soviet Union dreamed of fielding a fifth-gen fighter by the mid-1990s. That program was called MFI, or Multifunctional Frontline Fighter, intended to replace the MiG-29 and the legendary Flanker series. Two radical prototypes were born, the MiG-1.44 and the Sukhoi S-32, later renamed Su-47. But neither made it past the prototype stage. Then came the collapse of the Soviet Union, and with it, the funding dried up. But in 2001, Russia launched a new effort, PAKFA, a program to finally bring a next-gen fighter to life. This time, MiG and Sukhoi competed again. MiG -E pitched an affordable solution. Sukhoi, a more expensive but technically superior fighter, and Sukhoi won. By 2004, a prototype design codenamed T-50 was ready. It resembled the F-22 but was aimed to be far cheaper. By 2009, the first prototype had rolled out. In 2010, it took its first flight. Over the next decade, 10 test airframes flew, culminating in the official designation of Su-57 Felon in 2017. By 2020, the first production Su-57 entered Russian service. Sukhoi's ambition? Build a fighter better than the flanker, Russia's powerhouse airframe that rivals the F-15 in performance. From the outside, the Felon fits the mold of 5th gen design. Angular, sleek, stealthy. But inside Russia, not everyone agreed on the direction. Some engineers argued the flanker was already the perfect dogfighter, agile at all speeds, unmatched in handling. But stealth matters. And in modern warfare, beyond visual range dominance can decide who lives and who dies. So Sukhoi pushed forward, with stealth, range, and avionics in mind. Here's what we know, or think we know, about the felon's specs. Supercruise, Mach 1.3. Top speed, Mach 2.2. Combat range, 3,500 kilometers internal, 4,500 kilometers with drop tanks. Service ceiling, 66,000 feet. That's faster than the F-35 and its range exceeds the F-22 by a massive margin. Though how it achieves that is still a mystery. Internally, it carries up to six missiles with six more external hardpoints available. Think R-77Ms and R-37Ms for long-range kill shots. And then there's the tech. The Felon's sensor suite is advanced, even by Western standards. A Bielka ESA radar tracking up to 60 targets, infrared search and track, IRST, ultraviolet missile warning systems, laser countermeasures, cheek-mounted radars for 360-degree situational awareness. These side-looking radars aren't just for show. They let pilots hold missile locks while turning away, making tactics like notching and cranking far more effective. This tech allows pilots to fire, evade, and still guide their missiles, massively boosting survivability in a dogfight. The Felon still retains the flanker's high agility, thanks to thrust vectoring and levcons which manage airflow for better high-angle performance. But what about stealth? That's where things get murky. Unlike Western jets that use expensive radar-absorbent coatings, the Su-57 opts for radar-absorbing fiberglass, cheaper but potentially less effective. Most experts agree it's stealthier than a flanker, but not quite a raptor. Still, the Felon excels in electronic warfare, agility, 
and long-range weaponry, areas where Russia arguably leads over China's J-20. One critical area where Russia still shines? Engines. The Su-57's Saturn 30 engines are more reliable and easier to maintain than the flankers AL-31 and AL-41 units. China, meanwhile, continues to struggle with engine performance, though their WS-15 may be a game-changer. But for now, only the US, Russia, and the UK have mastered reliable jet engines for 5th gen fighters. So how is the Felon being used today? Well, that's the mystery. Officially, it entered service on December 25, 2020. But in reality, most frontline duties still fall to the Su-35 and Su-30 SM-3. Why? Cost. Logistics. Familiarity. Initial plans projected 200 Su-57s by 2028. Today, fewer than 40 are in service. Still, the design is cost-effective for a 5th gen jet and easier to maintain than an F-22. It may not be mass-produced, but it's not a white elephant either. The Felon's combat record is unclear. Russia claims it's flown missions in Ukraine since early 2022, mostly beyond the front lines using long-range missiles like the R-37. Some reports suggest it's even been used in SEAD roles, suppression of enemy air defenses. Ukraine has claimed to have damaged two Su-57s on the ground using FPV drones, but actual footage of the felon in combat is scarce, especially compared to the Su-35, which has plenty of confirmed kills. So what is the Su-57? A stealth fighter? A deterrent? A prototype in disguise? The truth is, it's all of the above. It's not replacing the flanker anytime soon. But it does give Russia a platform to compete with the F-22, F-35, and J-20. Even if only on paper for now. Like the Raptor, the Felon may be reserved for critical missions. A last resort tool when air superiority must be assured. Both are rare. Both are elite. Both are shrouded in mystery. And in a real war, both would be unleashed only when the skies truly matter. This is the Felon, Russia's answer to 5th Gen Warfare. Time will tell if it can rise to the challenge. Like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts below.